Hello everyone. In this tutorial we'll be going over how to simulate a simple circular uh, arc airfoil. Uh, this type of airfoil um, was used by the Wright brothers on the first few of their gliders and it's a really simple uh, airfoil. Um, uh, the main point of this tutorial is to show how you can easily change um, well, kind of like the power of uh, scripted meshes. So I'm basing this heavily on my previous single bend airfoil, actually the triplane airfoil uh, tutorial, but I'm just uh, changing some code uh, and reusing a lot of it uh, to get a completely different case. So uh, as usual, um, the case files contains the open foam uh, configuration simula uh, files for simulation. Clean is for your convenience to start over. Uh, mesh is uh, our Gmesh uh, meshing scripts. And run, the run script uh, pretty much runs everything in one shot and give, it gives you a uh, s result. So um, <clears throat> let's take a look at the mesh. Um, you can see that. Uh, this differs from the triplane case in that there's just this uh, I've, I've made this arc airfoil file and it's really a modified uh, triplane airfoil uh, well single bend airfoil fi uh, file and pretty much everything else is the same so let's look at main I deleted the two other loops and simply modified the number of surfaces that are described uh, to capture for the airfoil. Uh, this corresponds to the number of lines you have to make because uh, in Gmesh if you draw something in 2D and extrude it uh, the number of lines correspond to the number of resultant surfaces. So in our circular airfoil uh, we just have um, uh, six surfaces per airfoil whereas in the bend, uh, single bend airfoil case we had uh, nine I think so you just have to modify these numbers and modify the loops included in the sur surface definition and of course the number of loops made. In this case just one as opposed to three in the triplane airfoil case. So it's a very simple modification. Um, <coughs> to do the actual airfoil requires some fairly detailed knowledge of Gmesh syntax but uh, it was made much easier uh, because I was just able to modify the previous one, the triplane uh, or rather the single bed airfoil uh, case. <clears throat> so now you can see the sort of the power of scripted meshes in that new uh, similar meshes do not have to be completely remade from scratch in a GUI. You can reuse a lot of things um, <clears throat> and uh, in the case of uh, multi-plane airfoils, you can replicate and parameterize all sorts of features, and uh, it can be very useful. <coughs> um, so yeah, let's take a look at the mesh itself. It's very simple. I have this um, rotated at 20 degrees angle of attack. Just take a look at the mesh. It's very simple. Just two arcs here and a large arc describing the uh, airfoil. In the center I'd have to calculate from basic geometry problems and then everything you can just draw everything else. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, draw all the surfaces from these basic formulas. So, if you if you want to look in depth, uh, you can you can look at the arc airfoil .geo file. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I've gone through running the case so many times that uh, I'll just go ahead and go to the post process results. This is the velocity field. Um, you can see it's pretty stalled 
Um, the lift coefficient here was about over 1.5 and the um, <clears throat> drag about I think point I'm not sure but s some high value on the order of point 0.1 or, or, or so uh, so <clears> the <throat> same order of magnitude I mean um, as we saw in our NACA simulation uh, video um, open foam for these at least for these coarse meshes tends to greatly overestimate the drag and underestimate the lift so um, you can actually look up uh, performance data uh, experimental measurements for circular airfoils and see that uh, it, it seems in this case we we have done both uh, underestimated the lift coefficient and overestimated the drag as well so, um, yeah, that tends to be a common pattern.